Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. <laughs> And welcome. You are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on KCAA, NBC News, CNBC News, and NBC Sports Radio Station, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Audible, iTunes, tune in. Tiki Live Rumble, and more. And it is Friday Fun Day, and I am Dr. Marissa, your hashtag positively opinionated host who tries to start your day every day in the most positive way. This is show number 690. I have not been doing this for very long. In fact, Monday we'll be celebrating nine years. I am just amazed. I got a little emotional yesterday. Maybe I will today too, but I am celebrating. I'm celebrating life and I'm so grateful that one of the fabulous stops on the joy ride of my life is actually my show. So it started, um, I woke up one morning at 4.30 in the morning and the voice said, radio. And I said, radio? <laughs> and that's what happened and started. And I'm actually trying to do um, more than one thing. Oh, it's poor connection. That's why. Uh, I'm trying to actually do my <laughs> Instagram at the same time. But it, it looks like I can only do seven, eight things at one time, not nine. But uh, you know that I start every show for the last month. We started this discipline to start the day taking a bite of my gratitude sandwich. So that's what's on the breakfast menu again. And for those of you who have been here before, you know how to play. I actually put a link in the chat if you feel like you are um, wanting to join me to play the gratitude game, then come in studio. Otherwise, just go ahead and chat. I see eyeballs. Thank you for uh, continuing to connect with me and uh, actually, uh, Interact with me, thank you. <laughs> so, gratitude sandwich means we start with eight specific gratitudes and then we go to appreciations. That's the top of the bun and the bottom of the bun. And if you eat a gratitude sandwich every day, you will blanket your day in more positivity. And when you are focused on things that are good, guess what happens? more good things happen to you so you can continue to feel good. That's why we do it for no other reason that it's not about morality. It's not about, you know, you should do this. Don't shit on yourself. Just uh, join me in the gratitudes. Late great teacher, Dr. Wayne Dyer said five. I'm a little bit of an overachiever and eight is a lucky number in Chinese. I know you thought I was Swedish, but uh, we do eight. So you're ready. Here we go. I am grateful for technology and the ability to put it down <laughs> because it's distracting me. Um, I am grateful that uh, when I go to Canada next week uh, to visit my mom for two weeks, that technology has allowed me to bring you new shows. So I've been working on that over time so that you're not uh, bored while I'm away. Even gratitudes. Uh, three, I am grateful for uh, my toothpaste. Makes my mouth uh, feel better in the morning. I'm grateful for hot showers and soap. That's five. I'm grateful that, oh my goodness, I can't believe that I have been able to, I think this is one of my longest relationships my, my marriage was actually 9.2, uh, or I say my 
marriage was 9.2 years. That was the sentence. But uh, you know I'm joking because chapter four is out of hatred into forgiveness. <laughs> and I'm happily divorced. So that's six. Uh, I am grateful that my daughter is graduating from UC Davis in June. This is daughter number two. So I'll have both out of college at seven. And number eight, I'm grateful that yesterday I had a dead battery. And as a result of that, I found out that one, I'm covered for another year with the Mazda warranty, and two, that the battery may be covered and I don't have to pay for it. So those are really great gratitudes in my book. I hope that you have played along and put down gratitudes on your gratitude journal or turn to the person beside you to do that. Now, why do I do the gratitudes? It sets the beginning of the day before you get started with your phone saying, you know, who, what the news is, which is usually old. It's uh, something that's happened in the past and usually something negative. If it bleeds, it leads. So we firm up the focus and your ability to choose. It's the C word, but it's a choose instead of some people are afraid of commitment, but uh, choice is our most powerful tool in life. Then what I want you to do tonight, and I'll give you an idea of what I did last night, is before you go to bed, instead of thinking about all the things you have to do, all the things that you didn't do, all the people that uh, insulted you, all the people you want revenge on, instead of doing that, we choose to focus on what is good with us. Now, that is not easy because a lot of us were raised to not toot our own horn and not say what's good about us. And you're not all that, but you are all that. And I want us to anchor that knowing of who we are in the core of who we are. That is 88% fabulous. So those things that you know you are, and if you have trouble with this, you're going to definitely want to uh, go visit my website that has some free tools and some free classes and free orientation. And today's free Asian Oprah giveaway is an audiobook copy of this book, Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are. Because if you can't approve of yourself, how the fork do you expect anybody else to? So that is probably the main and most important focus of the work that I do on my happy 88 mission, 88 million more happy people in the next eight years, is that we, a lot of us don't like our own selves. And so we walk around with our antenna up looking for approval from people, places, and things around us. And people are a little, you know, they're not consistent. One day they love you, the next day they don't. So we have to grow that muscle to love ourselves 88% of the time. So what do you appreciate about yourself? Um, I'm gonna turn this also into a compliment thing. Uh, Ismail Cortez, I am, uh, I, I hope you appreciate that you are appreciative because you come and support and you uh, make sure I know you're there and make sure that you're, uh, playing along and affirming all my positivity. So that's the compliment. So if you don't have that as one of your qualities, add it. Uh, I am also appreciative. I'm also uh, good at being grateful. I am resilient because of all the things that I've gone through in my life. Uh, difficult childhood with some um, messages of not good enough on, on steroids and a difficult divorce where I lost a lot. Um, and I, I wouldn't change a thing because I am who I am because of all those painful experiences. I appreciate that I know that pain is mandatory, but suffering is optional. I am, um, I, I'm creative. <laughs> I just love creating. I did my first short film during COVID and uh, I won one laurel and I, and I just submitted at another film festival for another one. Also, I am funny. And one of the best things about my divorce is that I own my funny. 
I was told almost every day that I was not funny, but I'm funny. And laughter is my favorite sound on the planet. All right, so there's eight appreciations of myself. I hope that you are appreciating yourself and, and at least have three things that you're going to go to sleep with so that you can actually sleep. Uh, thanks to this exercise, I don't have to take sleep pills. I don't have to take Ambien. I don't have to take melatonin because I have a discipline that allows me to know who I am and that I am not a piece of shiitake, which is what I used to think I was because that's the message I grew up with. And I'm not hot shiitake either. <laughs> I'm just pretty good shiitake. I'm 88% fabulous. 12% of the time I step in it, say things I shouldn't, do things I shouldn't, or not do things that I should, but I don't should all over myself. Instead, I embrace my 88% goodness, and I hope you do too. And there's your happy tip for this morning. Don't forget, Asian Oprah giveaway is an audiobook copy of this today. I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to make you wait for the rest of the show. If you go to drmarissa.life, and put gratitude sandwich in the subject line, you will get a free audiobook copy. All right. And what's up for today's show? Guess what day it is today? It's Arbor Day. And I was fortunate enough to interview the CEO of the Arbor Foundation. That's coming up after break as well. It's Small Business Week next week. So an interview with a Verizon tech manager who talks about a survey that they did with small businesses. How are small businesses doing after COVID? It was a question I wanted answered. So those interviews coming after the break, as well as I'm going to teach you a little Tai Chi this morning. I did something the other day. People loved it. So I'm going to teach you another form this morning so that you can be enticed to come to my class tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Yes, I'm starting to teach on the beach again. And if you're in Southern California, please come join me and you'll see the, uh, the promo for that as well as uh, teach you a lesson. All right. Before we go on break, one last thing. It is a very special day. One is a little bit sad. My beautiful nephew in love, who's married to my favorite niece, his name's Aaron. He left for Australia he and my niece are moving to Australia, and it's wonderful. They've got new um, jobs. They've bought a beautiful new home. Those of you who follow me on social media, Doc Balance on Instagram, Dr. Merce everywhere else, know that how close I am. And so I'm a little sad that they are leaving the proximity here. But I know that thanks to technology and travel and how lucky we are, you know, people in the past before airplanes couldn't visit anybody uh, that was far away or anything like that. So I'm grateful that I can travel, but I wanted to say bon voyage and um, best wishes. And I love you so much, Erin and uh, my niece, Christina. The second thing is this amazing day because my bonus mom and dad, um, Marty and Dolores are turning 72 year wedding anniversary today. <laughs> Happy anniversary, dear beloved Dolores and Graham. Happy anniversary to you. And I'm so grateful I get to, I've been invited to celebrate uh, their anniversary tonight for dinner. And I just want to wish both of them the most amazing anniversary. Uh, I asked, I interviewed them last year on how they made it to 71 years. And my bonus dad said, well, we never thought about divorce at the same time. <laughs> so there you go. There's the secret to a very long and happy 88% of the time marriage. And I'm just so grateful to be uh, loved by them. And a little commercial, my eight, uh, she's going to be 90. She's 89 now. Uh, bonus mom, Dolores, is this weekend. You can actually see her and buy her original creation. She knits, she crochets, 
She uh, sews vests, all those fuzzy vests you see me in, she made those. So go down and visit Timeless Treasure Boutiques in Huntington Beach. Just look that up, Timeless Treasure Boutiques, and you'll see the address. They just moved. They're on Warner. So please go visit. Find Dolores. Go in and say, I heard on Dr. Marissa that Dolores is selling her creations. Go support her. She is, um, you know, uh, losing her sight and, and it breaks my heart, but she's such a trooper. So go and support. But her stuff is still beautiful. She, you know, when you do things for a long time, she can knit and crochet without even looking. So please do go and support her. All right. That's the commercial. Before the commercial break, I am Dr. Marissa. Come back for my doubleheader interviews, Arbor Day and Small Business Week. When we come back here on Take My Advice, I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. Well, she has been dubbed the Asian Oprah, and she just wants all of us to be happy. Dr. Marissa, a.k.a. the Asian Oprah, says the most important thing you can choose is choosing to be happy. You are tuned into my weekly talk radio TV show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. That's the idea for Dr. Marissa Pay's new book called Eight Ways to Be Happy. Many of us say, I am my own worst critic. Nobody's harder on me than I am. And my response to that is, stop it. <laughs> Why are you doing that to yourself? You have to be your biggest fan because if you can't at the end of the day say, I did a good job, who is? We don't have to constantly be angry at the things that are wrong. Why don't we choose to be happy about things that are right? We have the choice. That's our muscle. And, and life is so amazing if we can see it. Want delicious Vietnamese Asian fusion cuisine that is so good for your health you won't believe your taste buds? Olac is a 100% plant-based vegan restaurant founded by Mai on living foods and a love for animals that won't make you sacrifice taste for health. Two locations to delight you, downtown LA and Fountain Valley. So go to www.olac.com, A-U-L-A-C, to book your reservation today. Saving the planet has never tasted so good. Take back your life with Dr. Marisha Pay. And welcome back. You're tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on NBC News Radio, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, and my YouTube channel, where if you free subscribe, you get to get all past 689 shows and my red carpet playlist with the... Uh, Interviews with Priscilla Presley, Melissa Etheridge, Shannon Miller, uh, Nicholas Spark, and Halle Berry, John Travolta, Quincy Jones, and more. I went through uh, a lot of my 
past uh, interviews. I'm so blessed in this time where I'm reflecting nine years on the air. I have truly been so fortunate to meet the most interesting people and that means you too. And uh, earlier we had Chef Andre commenting, he's coming on. That interview will be on Wednesday. I have a plethora of people coming on for you while I'm in Canada. So keep it tuned here as well. I'm very, 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 very excited to announce that for my actual nine year on the air is Sunday is May 1st. I started May 1st, 2012. So I don't do shows on Sunday. I do every other day. I'm also on Saturday at six in case you missed a show, they play a repeat. But uh, those of you who aren't uh, uh, consistent in the morning can pick that up on Saturday at six. Thanks to Miguel and to Joe. Uh, for uh, rebroadcasting me in the evening, but I'm having on a, uh, a new tradition. So last year, I don't know if you remember, my eight year anniversary was with another one of the cast from Happy Days. So, you know, I had uh, Mrs. C, Marion Ross, when she was 89, come into studio and she did a Mother's Day interview, which I'm actually going to celebrate Mother's Day with two of my special Mother's Day uh, guests. One is Barbara Marks Hubbard, who's actually on the other side now. And that interview will be for Mother's Day because it's on Sunday. And then on the Monday following, it's going to be that Marion Ross interview, which was so delightful. So I thought I would celebrate Mother's Day with you with those two interviews. And then I had um, Potsy. Uh, uh, Anson Williams, y'all remember him from Happy Days, the show. He's also the award-winning, recognized creator of drowsy driving drops. So alert drops, you can find them in stores. They're really great if you are, uh, you know, driving in the evening. I have, thanks to him, uh, that spray. It's all natural, so alert is I believe the brand name, but just put Anson Williams Drowsy Driving and it'll come up. And did you know that his uncle is Heimlich? Like the Heimlich Maneuver, Heimlich? So if you missed any of my interviews with Anson, they're on my YouTube channel. As And then my third Happy Days guest is was Ralph Malf. And Don Most is such an amazing guy. He came on and, and blessed me celebrating eight years last year. And he talked about so lovingly his beautiful wife, Morgan, who has Parkinson's. And, you know, my mom has Parkinson's as well. So I, I said, I would love to have Morgan on with you or without you <laughs> on the show. So we've been trying to make it work. And guess what? To celebrate my nine years on the air, on camera, on the show, uh, he and Morgan are going to bless me with that celebration. So I'm so excited. I, I'm uh, going to give myself some applause because not just in my nine years, but my special guests are going to come and join me. <laughs> So you'll want to make sure you tune into that show on Monday. All right. Without further ado, let's go to Arbor Day interview and see what the CEO of the Arbor Day Foundation has to say about today, modern day tree hugging. Aims to inspire people to get involved in the tree plant with a very special interview just in time for Arbor Day. There's a new book called Now is the Time for Trees. It's been released that celebrates the power of trees and aims to inspire people to get involved in the tree planting movement. Joining us today is the author Dan Lamb, who's also the CEO of The Arbor Day Foundation. Under Dan's leadership, the foundation has become the largest nonprofit dedicated to planting trees. The foundation is also celebrating its 50th anniversary in 2022. Since its inception, the Arbor Day Foundation has helped to plant almost 
500 million trees in more than 50 countries. Please welcome to the show, Dan Lamb. Hey, great to be with you. Thanks. Absolutely. Now, why did you write this book? Well, you mentioned it's our 50th anniversary, and it also is the 150th anniversary of the Arbor Day holiday. And so we thought, what a perfect milestone to get a book out there that reminds people of the critical importance of trees today. You know, we have got forest fires, storms, mm-hmm. insects, disease. Our, our our trees and forests and cities and towns and forest lands are, are at, under attack in a lot of different ways. And that's why we say if ever there was a time to be planting trees, now is that time. And we wrote this book to help inspire, hopefully, people to celebrate trees and be a part of that tree planting movement. Wonderful. So it's like a resurfacing an actionable tree hugging effort. (laughs) (laughs) That's a great way to put it. That's a great way to put it. (laughs) Thank you. I love branding. Um, So (laughs) why is this book more important at the moment in time than in the past? Well, you know, we've got this, we've got, we've got all kinds of challenges facing us around the globe. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes feel like people feel like they can't make a difference and they can. And through the simple and elegant act of planting trees, people can make a real difference in their communities and their their neighborhoods on the health and wellness of their community, the resiliency of their community, by helping to shade homes, helping to remove pollutants from the air, sequester carbon. You know, the list of tree planting benefits goes on and on and on. And we thought this book is ripe to get out there to both celebrate those tree planters and inspire others to be a part of the tree planting movement. Absolutely. It is life-giving, I believe, in spite of all of the crazy people who think that climate change is not real. So I'm, I absolutely support uh, this movement. So uh, can you share some of the, your favorite tree stories from the book? Sure. You know, everyone has a tree story to share. Uh, Maybe it's their favorite tree in their neighborhood or the first tree they ever planted with their grandparents or their school. Everyone's got a tree story. And we we invited some of our friends, some celebrities and influencers to share their own stories with this book. And and they jumped at the chance. We have actress uh, Rosario Dawson as an example, Ryan Newman, who's a NASCAR driver, Soledad O'Brien, who's a journalist, and others just sharing how trees are a ba- were a backdrop of their lives and how it has impacted their families and their careers in some ways. And we also have great stories in the book about iconic and historic trees around the U.S. and around the world that, that, are, that are, are just important trees in our history. An example of that, it might be uh, like a story we have in there about the, the uh, memorial trees at 9-11, at the site of 9-11, where there's a seedling program helping to restore and plant trees in, in honor and in hope and in healing uh, for those who were impacted by the 9-11 bombings. Mm. And so those are examples of stories that are in there. And what, so for anyone, whether you're a tree lover, whether you're a tree planter, you're going to find something in this book that validates your love of trees and hopefully encourages you to do even more. Wonderful. Now, you're also the president of the Arbor Day Foundation. Tell me the efforts that they're uh, doing now on this anniversary and how people can get involved. You bet. So at the Arbor Day Foundation, as you mentioned, we have planted millions and millions of trees over the last 50 years. And we are so grateful to our members and our partners who have helped make that happen. But we're looking towards the next 50 years and the impact we can have and and ready to plant millions and millions more trees. You can learn more about the Arbor Day Foundation by visiting our website at arborday.org. Uh, and you can learn more about the Now is the Time for Trees book by visiting the Arbor Day Foundation website as well. It's on the home page. But you can find the Now is the Time for Trees book anywhere you buy books, uh, whether it's at your local bookstore or an online retailer. Um, or you could visit arborday.org to find out more about the book also. 
Beautiful. Yeah, I just love one of the things about trees is that there's no leaf that is like another. And it's a great example of how diverse and abundant and special we all are as living things. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us, those of you who are listening in now and uh, are not feeling good about anything. You can uh, go to the arborday.org Time for Trees book link and get this book to find out more about trees, as well as just going to arborday.org to find out how you can support this wonderful modern day tree hugging uh, uh, organization. <laughs> uh, any, <laughs> uh, the last thing that I always ask my guests is to who or what are you most grateful for? Uh, my family. Un- undoubtedly my family. My, I've got two beautiful kids and my wife, who's a fifth grade teacher, and they uh, grant me the, the opportunity to do what I do at the Arbor Day Foundation and support me and encourage me and inspire me. So that might be an easy answer, but it's the truth, and I'm really grateful Aww. to have them uh, as a support structure for me. And I'm, and I'm honestly grateful to have been on the call with you. I appreciate your positivity, and, uh, and I appreciate you helping to celebrate trees absolutely well i wish you the best and uh, arbor day foundation uh, gets the beneficial presence on the planet award for dan lamb i don't give it to all my guests <laughs> but i do absolutely uh, appreciate all the work that you've been doing planting millions and millions of trees because they have they house one of my favorite things is birds i love birds that sing mm-hmm. for no reason at all All right. Thank you again. Have the best day ever. Thanks. Have a great day. Is he not like the nicest guy? I just love when I'm asked to interview people who are just so nice and, and maybe one day I'll get to meet him, but ah, And so you can go now, go forth and wish everybody a happy tree day because that's, it's Arbor Day today. And you learned it here with Dr. Marissa. Now, my favorite tree is the maple tree. You can put it in the chat if you'd like to play Um, maple because I was born in Canada and I loved going in the winter time to actually watch the sapping process. It was amazing as a child and wonderful memories of that. All right. And feel free also to comment if you have any questions from these mini interviews that I get to do. The next one is celebrating Small Business Week, which starts uh, Sunday and runs through next week. So here you go with that interview. Enjoy. Security are on the rise, but small and mid-sized business owners are still seeking assistance. With Small Business Week kicking off on Sunday, we are taking a deep dive into the state of small and mid-sized businesses here to discuss findings from a new study about small business confidence, the challenges they are facing, and how technology is at the core of solution is Vice President of Sales for the Eastern U.S. for Verizon Business, Mark Tina. Welcome to the show, Mark. Good morning, Dr. Marissa, and thank you so much for having me on. It's a thrill to be here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. And just so you know, I'm a happy Verizon customer, and I will be billing you for that promotion. I'm just kidding. There you go. We appreciate (laughs) your loyalty. But I am am very happy. So let's get to the topic at hand. As we head into Small Business Week, how are small and mid-sized businesses feeling about their recovery process? I am thrilled to report that small, medium business owners are feeling very optimistic about the current state as well as their future trajectory. We just completed a small, medium business survey where 71% of the respondents stated that their business is in a much better place than it was a year ago. And they're also saying, 78% are saying that the infusion of technology is how they're not only surviving but thriving during the pandemic and creating new growth and revenue streams moving forward. So it's a very exciting time for sure. That's a definitely a good majority number, especially after all the hits that small business took 
Mm -hmm. uh, during COVID. It was just heartbreaking driving down the street, seeing all those places close. So I'm glad to hear those numbers. And, and how have small and mid-sized businesses innovated amid COVID-19, both in terms of employee and customer engagement? So the pandemic definitely accelerated the need for business owners to adopt technology in rapid fashion and go through digital transformation, which has become a very popular term. And I'll break it down by employee and customer, just like you asked. So on the employee side, right, these business owners have continued to hire. So in the last year, over 55% of small, medium business owners have hired new employees, of which 50% are remote. So now you have employees that might be in home offices, some might be in a regular office, some might be in the field with customers. And so you got to keep that employee base connected and productive. Verizon offers high speed internet via our 4G and 5G wireless network. It's simple, secure, and very easy to deploy. And then we also offer different collaboration tools, such as video conferencing via our BlueJeans platform, again, allowing those employees to collaborate with one another, with customers, with partners, and really their entire ecosystem to continue to conduct business. Uh, in fact, 49% of the businesses in the LA market have adopted video uh, as a main form of communication. On the customer side of the house, this means building a digital platform for consumers to be able to interact with these businesses, right? So customers want to meet wherever it is that they want to be met. 81% of small, medium business owners in the LA market have invested uh, in that digital marketing type of technology, and over 65% of businesses nationwide are citing higher revenue streams coming through their digital channels from before the pandemic. So it's just really yeah. exciting to see digital permeate the organization. That's, that's great. Now, I, I have heard and seen signs that said we're closed because uh, we can't hire employees, that we can't find people to come back to the job. That seems to be something that's happening nationwide. Is that one of the biggest concerns or what other big concerns are there among small and mid-sized businesses? And what tactics or tools uh, are they leveraging to combat them? Sure, so I'll hit what you said up front, right? The labor challenge as well as the supply chain challenges are, are real. And there are various ways that business owners are leveraging technology to help mitigate against some of that risk. So there's different technologies that bring about uh, different ways to, to create better productivity and efficiency in those times where there is an employee shortage. Technology is also, though, being used to attract new talent and retain the talent that's still there. Employees want to come to work for companies that are innovative and forward-looking, so technology becomes a big play there for them uh, to help on the employee front, which, as you mentioned, is a concern. A couple of mm -hmm. other concerns. Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, go, go ahead. I was just going to say a couple of others. Cybersecurity is a big one that the small, medium business customer is concerned with because, unfortunately, when a small, medium business of less than 1,000 employees gets hacked, over 50% wind up going out of business. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Verizon offers a suite of tools to help those business owners kind of defend their infrastructure and proactively manage it, detect threat, et cetera. So that's a big play. And then finally, we're helping them to manage all of this different technology that they're infusing into their business. We have a, something called Tech Team that provides 24 by seven tech support for those business customers. That's fantastic. So digitalization is a tool that's needed uh, for all those. Is there any other areas where that is helpful? I would say that not only on the customer and the, and the employee front that we just mentioned, but also in that company's ability to build out their partner ecosystem. And what I mean by that, if they're interacting with subcontractors or other uh, companies by way of association to bring a final product to market, you're going to have to be built for the future. And technology becomes that enabler and that common platform for different businesses to partner together and accelerate their growth trajectory as well. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, where are small and mid-sized businesses looking for support? 
So excited you asked because we are bringing back our uh, Verizon SMB days in our retail stores throughout the country right in time for SMB week where any business owner can stop by for a tech evaluation and to learn a ton more about our products and services. Secondly, we have an outside sales team that can uh, come into your place of business if you prefer to interact that way. And then finally, we have our digital platform where you can visit us on verizon.com slash small business where we have an SMB digital ready platform full of tools and resources for businesses of any size to take advantage of. So Verizon business is open for sale. That is phenomenal because Lord knows after this, uh, this thing called the pandemic, I think small businesses could use a lot of support. So it's wonderful that Verizon's providing that again, that's www.verizon.com uh, forward slash small business. Is that correct? That is correct, Dr. Marissa. Thank you so much for having me today. Okay. I really appreciate it. And you. thank you, Mark. Take care. You too. And that is small business information. I would love it if next week, since it is fall business week, you would go into every single small business that you use and thank them for making it through the pandemic. They're still there. I think that uh, we don't appreciate small business enough and the struggles that they go through and the fact that they actually made it through the pandemic is a miracle because so many people lost so much. So I know that when I went back to my um, wonderful manicure, pedicure place, Tiffany Nails on Main Street in Seal Beach, they gave me a, a beautiful class reunion welcome and I felt so loved and I'm so grateful that they made it through. They applied they were invited to apply for a small business loan. They did. And then they were told that they were, uh, they didn't qualify because they weren't in an underserved uh, area of, of, um, of town. And that was just heartbreaking. So I, I really, really want us next week to appreciate all small business and take advantage of the Verizon uh, uh, assessment, because I think that's a great thing. We've got to help each other now, small businesses. Of course, I am one as well. And thank you for the continued support there. All right, we're going to take a quick break and come back. And I'm going to give you a little balanced Tai Chi Go lesson here on Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind. Welcome to Balanced Tai Chi Gong. My name is Dr. Marissa Pei. For the next 28 minutes, we will be slow dancing with the universe in a moving meditation that promotes inner peace, one breath at a time. Just follow the sound of my voice and move with me as I guide you through this ancient wisdom through new thought practice. As a corporate psychologist, I created this practice in response to my life and those of my clients. We were professional, high-achievement-oriented, multitasking control freaks and exhausted. No matter how many successes, it was never enough. That, coupled with a painful life experience, led me on a quest to find another way to live and back to my Chinese roots. If you practice regularly, I can promise you that it will impact all health vortexes body, mind, spirit, soul. You will be in a place of balance and inner peace the way we were created. Xie xie. Be my partner, dance with me, just hold on. Want to find happiness? Well, it's looking for you. 
Eight Ways to Happiness from Wherever You Are by Dr. Marissa Pay is a self-help book on steroids with practical concepts and exercise that will help you find the love you've been looking for inside yourself. It's a cross between I'm okay and you're okay and you're still okay. And if you do the exercises, you will never hate yourself the same way again. For an autographed copy of this number one bestseller, go to www.drmarissa.life or just order at Target, Walmart, and Amazon today. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. And welcome back. You're tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on KCAA NBC News Radio Channel AM 1050, FM 102.3, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, my YouTube channel, and more. And I'm so grateful to be on this number one talk news station in the Inland Empire. And thanks to you. I am the number one 8 a.m. talk news show <laughs> in the IE, and I'm so grateful for that. I can't believe that I've been on every morning. Uh, thanks to COVID, I was promoted from a weekly show to an everyday morning show, and I'm so grateful for that. Thank you, Fred and Mark and all the guys at KCAA that support me. So we're going to close up today's show take you into the weekend because I'm actually teaching this class tomorrow morning at 10. Go to drmarissa.life and register there. So um, I taught you the acknowledgement last time. I'm going to teach you the last form in this 28-minute uh, moving meditation practice called Balanced Tai Chi Gong, also known as Chinese yoga. So uh, feet, shoulder, you, I know you can't see my feet, but imagine shoulder width apart, soft knees, soft shoulders, and soft elbows, okay? Take a deep breath in through your nose, and release through your mouth, ah, soft shoulders, soft elbows, soft knees, engaging the physical, the second breath, and releasing all the stories and the drama, ah, engaging the mind, grab those thoughts, and let them go, and finally, the last breath in through the nose, and releasing, ah, connecting with me through chi, eternal energy, the breath of life that connects us all, engaging spirit and soul. That's my three breath technology for more happiness. So that was easy. It should make you feel good. We're ready for the practice. We're going to take our arms and you're going to cross them in front of you. You're going to slightly bend your knees. I hope you're doing this and not just watching me. And you're going to take a deep breath in all the way to the top. Touch the fingers and release down. And again, all the way up. Touch and release. This is called acceptance. The form, I took 18 forms from Tai Chi and Qigong. So this is the final form. Acceptance stands for, hmm, the strategy or the tool that allows you to be okay with what is. Now, you may be saying, but I can't be okay. Dr. Marissa, if you're living under a rock, there's a pandemic, there's wars, there's all that stuff going on. Well, Einstein says the most important question that a human being has to answer is, is the universe friendly or not? If you say that the universe is not friendly, then guess what? You won't see anything friendly. <laughs> you will be holding your breath, waiting for the other shoe to drop. You won't be able to celebrate life at all. And you're constantly be going to be looking for what's wrong. And guess what? You're going to find it. So instead, Einstein says, if you choose to say, that the universe is friendly, no matter what's going on, then life becomes a joy ride. Well, he didn't say that, I said that. <laughs> because you're focusing on all the things that are good, all the things that are wonderful, that's why we do the gratitude sandwich. And I choose to say every single day that everything is friendly. 
the universe is friendly, and that way I can accept everything that is exactly as it is, especially those things that we cannot control. Breathe in, hold, and release. And that is the acceptance form. Then you remember the acknowledgement. Take this, the fighting hand. Uh, that in martial arts, this is the hand you use to fight. So you close your fighting hand to show that you come in peace. You hold your peace like this, the flat, and then your thumb is sort of tucked here. And then you bring it down to heart chakra and you do a little bow. And the first bow is to anything that's a symbol of the friendly universe or where you get your energy from. So in your home, you, uh, flowers, fountains, pictures of nature. Uh, some people already have a place where they meditate. Somewhere that symbolizes you a connection to a friendly universe, the power that creates the worlds, that made sure that the planets can crash into each other last night, that's responsible for every single grain of sand and leaf and, and blade of grass and water droplet is different than the other. That's some creator. So that's where you do the first acknowledgement to and you bow. I'm bowing to my ocean of abundance outside my window, so I'm going to go Shea, shea. And it's S-H-E-A, which means thank you in Mandarin. I use it as the Chinese namaste, the divine in me sees the divine in you. It is not S-H-I-T. It is S-H-E-A, or some of the Mandarin people say X-I-E. S-H-E-A and xie xie. And then if you're doing the practice, as I will be doing tomorrow in class in Long Beach, on the beach, in front of Plunge Restaurant at 10 a.m., then you turn to each other, whoever else is doing the practice, and say, xie, xie. thank you for sharing your energy with me. And release. I hope you enjoyed that. That is one of 18 forms that are in balance Tai Chi Gong. It's my cross between Tai Chi, Qigong, and a little bit of happiness coaching in between. If you're not in Southern California, can't make it tomorrow, go to my website, drmarissa.life. There's a download there or a DVD if you want a picture uh, that you can practice on your own. I, it's only 28 minutes. I recommend doing half in the morning, half at night with your gratitude sandwich, and I promise this is easier than yoga in the sense of that I, I, the reason why I created it is because I have a double hip replacements and some of the yoga poses I had issues with. So this was uh, something that got downloaded to me and I created years ago. And I get to teach at a lot of retreats for agape, meditation retreats, my big brother's um, a spring retreat, New Year's retreat. So uh, now I'm back to teaching it on the beach. All right, and I hope you join me, DrMarissa.life. It's a $20 donation, which is uh, goes towards my nonprofit, Eight Ways to Happiness, uh, 501C, that helps kids, teens, and young adults who have temporarily forgotten their birthright to happiness. So if you come to class, you donate, and you get a download and the class, or if you want to just go now to my site, drmarissa.life, that will help. And that's it for show number 690. I'm Dr. Marissa, wishing you all about balance, peace in, peace out, world peace through, inner peace. Now go forth and have the best weekend ever. We'll see you.